It's the brutal street assaults on Asian American seniors in. <laughs> he's he's destroyed. He's he's owning himself here. It's the. <laughs> Asian liberals out there are not happy with affirmative action being overturned. Now, that, of course, sounds contradictory, which precisely is that. It is contradictory. But uh, I found this article here from the LA Times today, and we will read it here. That says, and this is written by an Asian guy, an Asian liberal. Okay, I saw this on Twitter. It says, a question for Asian Americans celebrating affirmative actions end. What have we won? Well, I can answer, before we even get into this article, I can obviously answer that question. Uh, we have one opportunity. We have one fairness. As we brought up on Thursday's show, what they were doing at Harvard was, and, and we showed the statistics, right? An Asian student in the 100th academic percentile, meaning the top of the 1%, right? E even to higher than 1%, you know, that elite of academic student had a lesser chance of getting into Harvard than a black student with a 40 percentile uh, academic index, okay? So that means the 60, the top 60 percent, right? If you're in the 60 percentile of, you know how percentiles work. I know I'm being confusing, but hopefully you guys understand how that works, right? Versus the, the Asian kid literally with a 1600 SAT. If you were a black student with about a 1000 SAT, which is around what the 40th percentile is, you had a higher chance of getting into Harvard than an Asian student with a 1600, okay? So what we have won as Asians, Mr. Asian liberal, is I don't know, the system's actually fair to us, right? At least in some regards, we're no longer going to have to worry about having to face higher and more unfair standards than other races simply for being Asian. So that's what we've won, Mr. Genius, Mr. Asian Liberal. But here we go. This is the article here from Frank Cheong. Let's hear out his argument. So... A few moments after the Supreme Court struck down affirmative action, an email from the 8020 Initiative, which is a Chinese political action group, so landed in my inbox with the subject head, Victory. All right. I racked my brain, but I couldn't think of anything about Thursday's decision that was a victory for Asian Americans. What have we won? Again, I just explained to you what we won, right? We've won uh, the fact that, again, I don't know. Again, the system is fair to us, right? How about that? We've won that we're, we're, we're no longer discriminated against. And by the way, white people won that as well. But, uh, you know, whatever. We, we read on here. In their email, the 8020 Initiative's answer was equal opportunity for Asian Americans in education. Yes. Yes, that, that's right. Yes, that's a yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, 8020 Initiative. Uh, but Frank Shong argues that is false. The court's ruling makes the current method of achieving a diverse student body illegal, but it doesn't replace it with anything. College and university systems must create their own. Okay. So first of all, why, why is it necessary to achieve a diverse student body? Shouldn't the student body be based on their ability their merit, right? So that, that's what I would say. It, it, does, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's not of relevance whether or not a student body is diverse. However, what I will say is that the diversity quotas, Frank Shang, to give you the answer there, the diversity quotas that were being used to, you know, su supposedly achieve diversity were discriminating against Asians. Because Asians, if you look at the racial breakdown, right, on average, we do the best in school, highest test scores, all that stuff. So... <laughs> Part of the reason affirmative action was discriminating against us is not because there's some grand conspiracy or something to stop Asian progress or whatever was going on. It was more so because we were overrepresented in the, you know, academic statistics. So if you had colorblindness in admissions, you would see a college with a bunch of Asians based on academic performance, a bunch of white kids based on both academic performance and population, and lesser proportions, again, if they're qualified, they'll get in, but lesser proportions relatively of black and Hispanic students. So you can mention, oh, diversity, diversity, but the diversity practices hurt Asian kids. They do. Because on average, right, we disproportionately score at the top of the academic stuff. But if they say as a college, we don't want that many Asians, which is what Harvard does. They say, we don't want that one many Asians. Then you understand that, right? It's, it's tougher for us. It's more competitive for us than it is for other races. Okay. So even if you want to make the argument of diversity, diversity quotas hurt Asians and they hurt whites too. Okay. But they hurt Asians since this is what we're having the debate for. Uh, but anyways, we continue on here, but it goes on to say, 
and this is such a ridiculous argument, there is no guarantee that Harvard or any other elite university will admit more Asian students. My guess is that a, tradi a transitional patchwork of different diversity strategies will actually make the college application process more confusing and less transparent and all methods of producing a diverse body are more vulnerable to legal challenges now that this case has succeeded against Harvard has succeeded in the nation's highest court. So, you know, if they're going to be more confusing, first of all, that means they're going to be less effective, which is good, actually. Again, if we're arguing only as Asians, it is good for us that diversity strategies fail because diversity strategies discriminate against us. Genius. That's first and foremost. Um... You know, secondly here, though, you say there's no guarantee that Harvard will admit more Asian students. I suppose in a bubble, maybe that's true, right? We don't know for sure if anything's going to change. But what I will say is that with the old system, there's a guarantee that Asian students were going to get discriminated against, which we showed the statistics absolutely was happening. And so now at the very least that we, we've removed a very guarantee that Asians are going to be dis discriminated against. That's a net positive, guys. That, that, that's a neck up from what we had before. So you can stand there and say, there's no guarantee things will get better, and maybe that's true, but they can't get worse, okay? There, there's no way in which they get worse. So either nothing changes, which is whatever, or things get slightly better, or things get a lot better. Regardless, it's an improvement of the situation, but we continue on here, okay? And all methods of blah, 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 we just read that. It's still too early to know how college admissions by race will change. Again, that's true. That's true, my guy. But, okay, you're defending the system of old. The system of old was discriminating against Asians. So, you know, you, <laughs> you can make this argument, oh, we don't know if it's really going to change. Fair enough. But if it stays the same, then it can't get any worse, can it? So, like, what are you even talking about? But anyways, colleges will still attempt to produce racially diverse student bodies, I suppose, yeah, that is true, but it's going to be harder for them to do so, which again, if we're just talking about Asians as, as like race conscious, how we're going to talk about this, that's a good thing that helps us, that helps us. If they're not trying to pursue diversity and they're only going based on merit or they pursue diversity less, that helps Asians for reasons we just explained. Uh, but it's like trying to take a test blindfold, but failing is illegal. Again, diversity does not help Asians, quote unquote, so whatever. One predictor is what happened after California's affirmative action ban in 1996. Okay, so this is a cell phone right here. After California, yeah, and this is true. Affirmative action, believe it or not, is illegal in California because in the 90s, they had a referendum on it, okay? So check, this is <laughs> so silly. This is what happened, right? White and Asian student enrollment Throughout the University of California system, read this carefully, guys. White and Asian enrollment rose slightly, while Black and Latino enrollment at UCLA and Berkeley fell by 40% the first year the ban was implemented. Huh. So what you're saying is that it helped white and Asian students? Okay, because <laughs> this is this whole this sentence right here debunks your entire article. Because what was the what, what's the title of your article? What have we won, guys? As Asians, what have we won? Uh, <laughs> but you say here when California got rid of affirmative action, Asian enrollment increased. <laughs> so what do you mean? What have we won? We clearly, pretty clearly, obviously have won. That is, that's the dumbest cell phone I've ever heard. What do you mean? We haven't won. You said here that UC enrollment for Asians goes up. So that means we won. Dingus, hey. Hey, McFly. Hey. You know, I don't know. Maybe maybe you are the affirmative action. You're the one Asian who somehow benefited from affirmative action. I don't know. Because that I don't even know what you're trying to argue there. You're trying to argue in favor of us. Oh, there you go. It helped Asians. There. Whole article debunked. By, by, by yourself, by your own logic, okay? And by the way, I grew up in California. I can confirm that it's true. UCLA, uh, they, they actually, the, our nickname that we always had for it growing up, this is what we nicknamed UCLA, is uh, University of Caucasians Lost Among Asians. That, that, that's what we use, UCLA, Caucasians Lost Among Asians, because uh, that, that is what UCLA is. It's, like, it's literally full of Asians, right? The reason it's full of Asians is because affirmative action's not allowed in california so what happens the top university because of average academic performance that's reflected it's a bunch of it's a bunch of asian kids at the school right so you know that, that's how it goes
You know, I, I don't care one way or the other. I'm not being tribalistic about this. I'm just saying, as a matter of reality, if you take everyone on the basis of academic performance, that's what you get. You get University of Caucasians lost among Asians, right? That's what happens. Uh, but anyways, especially in California. Uh, but anyways, but even those gains in Asian student enrollment can't be attributed entirely to race-blind admissions. Oh, really? Okay, so, but... Uh... <laughs> But you, they do, they can though. At the time, cash poor universities were drastically increasing their admissions of international students, largely from Asian countries, because those applicants pr paid premium tuition fees. Again, perhaps that is true, but I, I you know, I, like I said, I grew up in Los Angeles. I've been to UCLA many times. There's plenty of Asians still there now, and not all of them are uh, international. So it just, you know, it, it still doesn't make any sense. So we have to ask ourselves truly, what have we won? Well, I answered your question a million times, but an easier... So here, let's say, an easier question to answer is what we have lost. America's racial tolerance is enshrined in a set of laws and legal opinions that make the practice of some forms of racism illegal. Affirmative action was a major foundation of those protections. Okay. It, it was a flawed policy with many valid criticisms, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the thing. The, the actual statement... I would argue affirmative action, even at its its inception, has always been a um a violation of the very civil rights laws that are on the books. Because if the whole basis of everything is you can't discriminate on the basis of race, then that should also mean you can't give favoritism on the basis of race. Because if you give favoritism, that means you have to discriminate against someone else because you're not holding people to the same standards. So you can say, oh, but but civil rights, right? But civil rights. Okay, and maybe in, first of all, it's not the 1960s anymore. But secondly, I would still argue that I, I don't know what affirmative action, quote unquote, looked like in the 60s. But I will say now, right, how that's being applied is just discrimination against whites and Asians, which you would think, in my opinion, actually violates the Civil Rights Act itself. And I think the court seems to agree there, but we continue on. Do, 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 do. Black families who never had equal access to the American dream were able to enter the middle class in record numbers. I, I don't know if affirmative action is the reason why, but whatever. And many low-income Asian Americans, especially Southeast Asian, Filipino, and Pacific Islander, became the first people in their families to attend college. Okay, so I, I think it's actually in many ways insulting to all these people to argue that affirmative action is the only reason they got there. But it's very contradictory when it comes to Asians, but still regardless. That's what we lost. How is that what we lost? That's not, that's not what we lost. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but, but even so, you know, I would argue, and I, and I said this in the video, I said, listen, I do think that class should play a role in college admissions. I don't think it should be everything. I, I don't think we should lower standards significantly because if you can't prove, hey, I'm at least smart enough to, to still do the coursework, then, that, then throw that out. But to some degree, yes, I do agree that, well, if you grew up in tough socioeconomic circumstances, then that should be considered because, yeah, you didn't have as many resources as the kid who goes to private school and has a 5.0 GPA. I don't have an issue with that. My thing, though, is that what you seem to ignore is that there are millions of poor white kids, first of all. A lot. And, you know, people act like it's not real. There's plenty of them. I care just as much about them. And th why should they be discriminated against by affirmative action? And even if you want to bring up, oh, the Southeast Asian, the Filipinos, I would argue, yes, you know, they w work their way up socioeconomically. I would argue that's not because of affirmative action. That's in spite of affirmative action. That's in spite of affirmative action. OK, because, you know, affirmative action suggests that the poor Asian kid and the poor white kids still get discriminated against. See what I'm saying? So uh, anyways, we, we can continue reading on here, but I, I won't read the whole story at this point. But uh, let's skim through it. Just, just find some ridiculous parts. He goes on to say, immigrants are sold a simple, seductive story about America. Here there is wealth, freedom, and equality. Well, you know, so what we got was a win for equality. Um, you know, I, I don't think hurting white and Asian people is uh, equality, but okay. Anyways, we, we came here so that you could have a better life. So he's just making an emotional appeal that's just nonsensical. And in fact, I could say this entire thing and then say, this is why I'm opposed to affirmative action. So that's just, that's just a bunch of nonsense. So blah, blah, blah. He goes on to complain about racism, this and that. It's all just ridiculous. 
And any Asian American look, here's, let me read from it more. Any Asian American looking to the Republican Party needs to remember how quicklessly and carelessly conservatives resorted to xenophobic language during the pandemic, which unleashed an, an unprecedented wave of anti-Asian violence. Huh. So here's my question then, Mr. Sir. A, where was the vast majority of the anti-Asian violence happening? Was it in Republican areas or was it in uh, different areas? And B, was it white supremacists who were committing the anti-Asian violence en masse? So you're still gaslighting about us. Actually, the Republicans want tough law and order so that way people don't push, uh, you know, Asians into subways and anyone into subways. So just going to point that out. Just going to point that out. You know, it's just ridiculous. Oh, I'm sure Trump is the reason why people in the inner city are attacking Asian people. Sure, sure it is. Uh, anyways, we've chosen the American dream over American reality because the truth is ugly. It's former President Trump tweeting about the Chinese virus. Okay, and, and it's... But, okay, first of all... I used to say it was, but, you know, maybe there's a case... Whatever, not going to talk about that on YouTube. But still, regardless... Okay, and it's you guys who are dis directly discriminating against Asians. So, oh, but, but but Trump made a mean tweet I don't like. So we should support discrimination against ourselves. Y you're ridiculous. You're ridiculous. You're ridiculous, effeminate, emotional. You know, okay. It's the brutal, it's the brutal street assaults on Asian American seniors in... <laughs> he's he's destroy he's he's owning himself here. It's the brutal assaults on Asian American seniors in Oakland, San Francisco, <laughs> New York, and Los Angeles. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure white Republicans are the reason those are happening, right? Notoriously, right? Notoriously Republican havens uh, of of white where white conservative rednecks are attacking people because that that's that's definitely what's happening, right? It's the six Asian women shot to death in at Atlanta area spas in March 2021. It's a newfound fear that some Asian Americans feel taking the bus, walking down the street, or standing on a subway platform. Yes, because that's definitely because of Republicans, right? It's not because liberal policies and also just immoral people are uh, are, are are doing all that stuff. No, it's it's certainly because Republicans, don't you know? Republicans are actually pulling the strings in New York, and the reason why the NYPD won't do anything and let all the criminals out of jail, and then the criminals attack people, including Asian people, you know, you know whose fault that is, guys? It's Donald Trump. Okay, Donald Trump secretly running. New York and LA and Oakland. It's cell phone, cell phone. What you just said is another reason to support Republicans, Asian people, and, and just anyone in general who cares about, uh, I don't know, safety. This is not the America we were told about, so why did we come? Shut up, shut up, okay. It's, it's nonsense. You're, the whole article is gaslighting, it's ridiculous. And the amount of cell phones in there, okay? <laughs> like, he, he made an argument for us, but thought they backed him up. I don't know, I don't know. If, if this is the the Asian journalist that affirmative action is producing, then I don't know. Maybe there's something to be said there. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyways, there's the there's the Asian affirmative action article. Wanted to talk about that. I will reiterate, and I will say this again. And as brutal as this sounds, it's true. Really, frankly, I hate to use their language, but it's true. Any Asian person that supports affirmative action, like you're a race traitor. You always call me a race traitor because. I don't know, I, I, I support family or conservative values or whatever, but no, you're, you're the one who actively looks at the system and says, huh, the system should be worse to me. The system should discriminate against me <laughs> on the basis of my race. By definition, what is that? You know, it is, it is true, it is true. <laughs>